My ancestors brought this plant with them to the United States because they believed that wreaths of it warded off evil spirits. But then they realized it just wards off baby redwood trees. Seriously, check this out. English ivy escaped into the wild via a bird's butt. So English ivy produces berries that the birds eat. And then they fly into the forest and they... And ivy is born. We have a lot of invasive plants in California, but few can invade an old growth redwood forest. But see all these little plants? They're gonna grow up the trees to reach the sunlight and make even more berries. Then once the ivy gets too heavy for the tree, the tree will topple over, but the ivy may survive and send out octopus arms to cover more baby trees until pretty soon all you have is English ivy. It's what we call English ivy desert, and most wildlife can't live in an English ivy desert. Like ivy, most invasive plants need some kind of disturbance. And since 1850, we've had a lot, 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 lot of disturbance in California's landscapes. For example, we've already cut down over 95% of the old growth redwood forests. And the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of miles of hurriedly built logging roads on our steep mountainsides has caused tons of erosion, landslides. And landslides are big muddy scrapes in the earth that are perfect for invasive plants to colonize. At Redwoods Rising, we are helping those areas heal themselves. And we're preventing the colonization of these areas by non-native invasive plants. Because invasive plants slowly kill off the native plants, the host plants, that lots and lots of insects depend on. And insects are like the plankton of the land. So without those insects, you don't have a lot of other creatures. I mean, you're always gonna, there's always gonna be plenty of mosquitoes, but you, won't have the butterflies and moths that have to lay their eggs on specific plants. Think monarch and milkweed. Lots of butterflies and moths are like that. And without those native plants, you don't have those native butterflies and moths, so they don't have the caterpillars, which are the go-to food for songbird parents, so you have less songbirds. You just end up with a bunch of invasive plants and mosquitoes. Boo! And yes, the songbirds do eat the English ivy berries, but mostly because that might be the only berries to eat. So when we remove the English ivy, we really want these native plants to grow in their place that bury at the correct time, usually right before migration, so those birds can fatten up for the long flight down south. So if invasive plants colonize these areas before native plants can get in there, we have less insects and therefore less birds and therefore less coolness and biodiversity. If you want to learn more, I host a podcast called Jumpstart Nature and episode nine is about invasive species. I hope you check it out. It can be downloaded anywhere where you get your podcasts. In my area, we have a group called Redwood Invasive Plant Eradicators. And maybe you have something like that in your area. We need volunteers to help us pull these invasive plants because there's so many of them. And what's really frustrating is a lot of these invasive plants are still for sale in our big box stores, but not Oregon. They were smart enough to make selling English ivy illegal so that it didn't bury up their baby trees and cause English ivy deserts because Oregon depends on its timber economy and its tourism economy. Follow us. We're on many different social media platforms still at Redwoods Rising.